Hello people of the internet, welcome to Millennium Edition 56. So today we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, we're doing another how-to. This is probably the first how-to of 2019 to be quite honest. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be showing you how to configure a virtual box from start to finish. Basically from the time it takes me to open the window of Oracle VM VirtualBox, which I will be using, to installing an operating system, to configuring your virtual box, and to making it the most optimized possible for your computer setup. Anyway, this is going to be a pretty long video, so let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open VirtualBox or whatever you're using. This only applies to VirtualBox. This does not apply to all emulation softwares. The first thing I want to do is I want to get into why you would want to emulate software in the first place. Now I believe that the only reason why you would want to do a virtual box has a lot to do with uh, I'll be quiet uh, has a lot to do with uh, you want a different operating system you want to try something different but you don't want to say you don't want to ruin your own computer doing it or you don't want to dual boot because that's a little bit more complicated. So that's when you try VirtualBox. Now we're in the VirtualBox window. Obviously these are all inaccessible and the reason why they are all inaccessible is because uh, I'll tell you later as we go on. But anyway we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove all of these. The excess inaccessibility basically means that either the virtual disk is gone or the the files for this system are gone. Of which that is the case in this case. I will get to that later. Now we're going to be starting by hitting new and you want to put a name for it. So uh, the name I'm going to give my virtual box is Henry, because why not? By the way, my name is not Henry, don't ask. Um, so, you may be uh, asking, what's all this? This is a family of operating systems. So you can do Microsoft Windows, Linux, Solaris, BSD, OS2, which this day and age, who's running OS2 on one of these? Mac OS10, which I have tried, doesn't work, or other. We're going to do Microsoft, or today we're going to do Linux, and he, here's all this. That's going to, if I were you, I'd just select the one you're going to use, which in my case, we're going to be doing a version of Ubuntu 64-bit. Next, you want to do is you want to give memory. So the recommended is a gig. We're going to give my system two. Now it's measured in megabytes, so beware. Or you can give it as much as all your RAM, but that's not really ideal, if I'm honest. Ideally, I'm going to give mine two gigs to start. Now, if this is not optimal, you can change this later, and I'll show you how to later in the video. Click Next. You can create a virtual hard disk, you can do a, vir a existing virtual hard disk file or you cannot add a virtual hard disk. It is recommended that you add a virtual hard disk because yeah, you're going to need it. Create. Now I recommend VDI because that's the easiest to set up. VHD you should only use if you're going to be using this with other programs of the same nature. So we're going to use VDI and fixed size is always what I use. I never use a dynamically allocated It almost never works with operating systems in my experience. Your experience may be different. Henry a place to live. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give him, uh, we're going to start out with 60. Now if you want to add, if you want to add hard disks l later in life, like if you want to add hard disks, I've done this before, you can and I'll show you how to later in the video or possibly a part two or maybe an extended version of this. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, you hit create and it's a big waiting game. 
Yikes. That's because it's got to try and integrate this into the hard drive of your computer. This is why it takes so long. So, uh, yeah. We're waiting. Now, most of the time it takes a long time. So, I'll come back when this is finished. Alright, so with your uh, virtual hard drive now configured and ready to go, the next logical thing to do is to power it on. Now, nothing's really going to happen at this time. In fact, well, it's going to say error can't find anything in the optical drive. But, you're in luck because this dialog will appear out of nowhere. It says select startup disk. What you do is you hit this to find your optical disk. Now, it will need to be an ISO or I believe there's also yeah, DMG format. Uh, I'm guessing it's DMG for Mac. You gotta find it, of which I will do real quick. Should be here somewhere. There we go. And uh, like I said, for this one, we're going to be doing Ubuntu GNOME. So let's go ahead and start it up and let's see what it does. Now, uh, note that at this time, uh, it will not optimize for your screen. It will probably just run in a window similar to this. So we got to wait. Now it's it is to note every operating system is going to be different. Like if you install Ubuntu GNOME, it's going to be different than st installing uh, Linux Mint, or it's going to be different than installing Windows 10 or OS 10 or OS 2 or whatever you want to put on your virtual machine it's most likely going to be different than this I'm just running you through the process of GNOME I am not running you through the process of literally anything else I do not mind the slowness of my computer or the frame rate of the recording as right now my computer is pretty much running over time trying to do this system and run this computer at the exact same time because after all this is an emulation so uh, like I said this is going to be completely different than you may think so let's install Ubuntu GNOME now now is a good time to check your task manager which is why I have that open and check and see how much memory you're pulling now I'm pulling a little bit extra memory because my computer is running this uh, this uh, recording program but if it's too much memory that it the uh, virtual box is using at the time then you may want to lower the memory down just a hair that is uh, my biggest recommendation like if it's taking up too much RAM like if 2 gigs is too much then you might want to find a different number that may or may not work better for your system. Alright, so let's install Ubuntu GNOME. Like I said, it's going to be completely different than what you may think. Download updates while installing. This is a good idea. You definitely should do that, especially with Linux based systems. And install this third party software continue and then it will install Ubuntu GNOME now like I said everything is going now to be different. it will different. copy files it will take a little bit longer because it is using a hard drive so I will come back when this is finished now that your operating system is installed the next logical step you may want to take is especially if you're running Oracle via VirtualBox there's a tool you can use called uh, VirtualBox Guest Edition. Here's where you do that. Install the Guest Edition CD. It will pop up. You can hit Run. Of course, you got to enter in your password annoyingly with Ubuntu. That's the one thing uh, that is not great about running Ubuntu on this is that um, the bad thing about running Ubuntu is uh, you have to enter in your password every time you want to do something. 
which is not very great, but I mean, what can you do? So, you gotta wait for guest editions to install. Well, you should wait for guest editions. It should be noted that some operating systems don't really need a guest editions in order to work properly. Like for example, in my experience, Windows XP, all versions have been able to just adapt in some way, shape, or form. It's just helpful for those times where there's a program or an operating system that you're running in a virtual box that will not adapt. Like Ubuntu GNOME, for example, 14.10. Now, obviously, this is a very out of date version of Ubuntu GNOME, and I may do a uh, check the interface at some point on this operating system, but for now, this is what we're getting. So that has been how to configure a VirtualBox, how to install an operating system within VirtualBox, and how to use guest editions. If you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, hit that like button. And as always, thank you for watching.